everyone, welcome back to Pocket Perspectives Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tanisha, and I'm joined by Jack. Hello. And, I mean, we've had so many guests on recently, so we've, it's been a right treat for you all, and today is no different. We've got an amazing guest on. We've got Kath Wollers um, from Stop Loan Sharks. If you didn't know, Stop Loan Sharks are actually a partner of IE Hub, so we thought, very fitting, bring Kath on and talk to you all about um, Loan Sharks. So, Jack, if you wanted to provide a bit of context on why we decided to do this today. Yeah, I feel like... When you, you hear the word loan shark or illegal money lending, I feel like a lot of people don't know what that means and sort of the dangers of it. Um, so we thought it would be really good to get you on, Kath, um, just to discuss it, because I actually was looking on the Stop Loan Shark website and saw that just over one million people are actually affected or could be borrowing from an illegal money lender, which is absolutely insane. Like, mm-hmm. I think that's wild that it's that high. Um, so we just wanted to bring you in um, and learn a little bit about that. Absolutely. Hi, yeah, everyone. My name's Kath Wollers. I work for Stop Loan Sharks, otherwise known as the England Illegal Money Lending Team. And um, basically, we are a government funded agency set up to identify, investigate and prosecute loan sharks. But alongside that, we do a lot of work trying to stop people going to loan sharks in the first place, because we'd much rather that didn't happen than we had to go in and sort of sweep up afterwards, if that makes sense. So, yeah, we're all about preventative work. We're all about warning people about the dangers of loan sharks and trying to signpost them to alternatives. Um, but where people have fallen in grasp of a loan shark, we offer specialist support and help to help them get out of that situation. And we can actually prosecute the loan sharks as well, take them through the courts and have them removed from communities, which is our sort of ultimate power. Yeah, amazing. And I think just for the basics, people who don't even know what kind of loan sharks are or what illegal, who illegal money lenders are. Could you kind of give an overview um, of them, please? Yeah, absolutely. So literally anybody could be a loan shark. I could be a loan shark, although this is not a confession. Um, <laughs> so the legal definition is it's someone who lends money as a business um, when they haven't got authorization from the Financial Conduct Authority, which sounds dead technical. But what that really means is if you want to be a loan person, if you want to run a loan business, you've got to get permission from the government and they will do various checks to make sure you're a fit and proper person and various other things. Make sure you know, you're know you not undisclosed bankrupt, you haven't got fraud convictions, those sorts of things. And then they give you this authorization. Once you've got the authorization, how you lend money is very carefully stipulated in legislation. So you've got to give people paperwork. You've got to tell them how much they're going to pay back. You've got to deal with them reasonably if they miss a payment. Whereas loan sharks who aren't authorised don't listen to any of that and they behave however they would like. But having said that, there is a big spectrum of illegal lenders. Um, So at one end, there's people linked to organised crime. So we do deal with people where there's also modern day slavery or cuckooing or drugs offences going on as well. And at the other end, there's someone who lends maybe on an estate to 10, 15, 20 people, maybe charging 50, 100 percent interest, not really threatening people, but making sure they carry on paying some way or another. Now, at the lower end, there's still a problem because they're still not doing affordability checks. They're still not making sure people can afford that loan or giving them any paperwork or consumer protection, but very different from an organised criminal. And then there's everything in between. So we've arrested people in their 80s. Um, one in five of the people mm. we arrested last year was female, which always surprises people. People wow. always think of kind of mm. Phil Mitchell as your lone shark rather yeah. than yeah. Um, rather than a lady. Um, it can literally be anybody. And that's what makes it so difficult, really, because they're quite hard to spot. And it makes it quite hard for people not to fall into their grasp because they don't walk around with a big sign on saying I'm a lone shark. Yeah, definitely. And I think before obviously we'd be part of you and I learned a little bit more, like I personally just didn't know and maybe it's just be, being a bit like just blinkers on don't want to think about it but you just think of loan sharks you think are these big scary people like you said the phil mitchells of the world is it quite common obviously jack shared the statistic before but like is it like more common than people think yeah definitely so that 1.08 million is actually two percent of the population so if you think about it you know that's two percent of people you know potentially and and things like that it, it gets really sort of tricky um, so, yeah, it, it does go on and it goes on hidden in our estates, in our communities all across the country. So we know that half the people that borrowed from a loan shark last year genuinely thought they were borrowing from a friend when they took the loan out. So they didn't think they were borrowing mm. from a loan shark. They thought it was Brian at work or Marie mm. at the school gates, you know, or Dave down the pub. And mm. they think it's someone helping them out. So it's really hard for us to do a warning message because they think they're borrowing from a mate. And why wouldn't you do that? And it's only further down the line when maybe they question how much they've paid back or they have to miss a payment and, and the loan shark turns nasty that they realise, oh, God, this isn't my mate after all. What have I got into here? 
So that's one of the things that tends to surprise people that, you know, it's it's not always obvious that that's what you're doing. You're taking a loan from a loan shark. Yeah. And what is the difference, do you think, in terms of obviously lending money from a friend and friend member compared to like a loan shark? What are the differences to look out for of people? So I think, you know, family members, you should be all right. Shouldn't you? You'd like to think you're yeah. all right if you borrowed no. from Uncle Brian and <laughs> you'd like to think you're OK. Um, friends can be trickier. And I think it's that thing, isn't it, of a bit of buyer beware, sort of typical trading mm. standards advice that we give out all the time. If this is someone you've known for 20 years and you went to school together and you were bridesmaid at their wedding and their godmother to your kids, you're probably all right borrowing £200 off them. Yeah. If it's someone you've known at the school gates for eight months and you don't know the husband's name, you're not quite sure what the surname is or what they do for a job, why would they lend you money? Because they're yeah. taking a risk doing that. Because you could disappear, you could say, tomorrow I'm not paying you back, they don't know you, so why would they lend you money? And I think it's just trying to draw that line as to you know where friend becomes loan shark. One of the things for us would be as well, if they're lending to lots of people, that would be yeah. a big red flag. Because, mm. you know, if my friend came to me and, and asked for £200 because she needed a tyre for a car because it had burst and she had no cash or payday, I could just about maybe lend that to her. If mm. someone else then came and asked me for money, I'd, I'd be stuck. I wouldn't be able to do anything. Yeah. You know, I'd, I'd be eating <laughs> beans on toast for the rest of the month myself. So, you know, someone who's <laughs> lending to lots of people, I think that'd be a big red flag for us. Yeah, big one and sign. And um, do you have any examples or like stories that you can share with people that you've helped just to kind of highlight the dangers of what it can actually happen with loan sharks? Yeah, definitely. I always say there's, there's two big issues with loan sharks. So the first one is financial. They don't care how much you pay back. They just want their money. They don't care if you're not paying your rent or your mortgage or your priority debts. They just want their money. And that's why they don't do affordability checks, because they just want that hook of a loan. And then they'll just extort money and, and say, well, don't pay your rent. Don't pay your mortgage. That's not my problem. Yeah. Um, the other issue is what it does to people's mental health. So, you know, we've had people push to the brink of despair. People who are isolated from their partners because they haven't told them about the loan, getting, you know, 150 text messages a day. Loan shark hammering on the door at 5 a.m. and terrifying the kids, threatening to tell your boss at work that you're mm-hmm. um she should be watched because you should have your hand in the till because you owe them money. So there's one lady we, we worked with um, in the Northwest called Kelly, um, and she earned £1,088 a month with plus some universal credit. Um, she's mum of four, and she borrowed some money off one of her sister's friends, a female, who she thought was her friend too. Um, she borrowed um, £50, she had to pay back 100 Next time she borrowed 100 she had to pay back 200 And because it was quite a quick turnover, Paying the loan shark back meant she was short again, so she had to borrow again. So when we met with Kelly, um, she'd borrowed, we worked out, about £2,600 in really small loans. Mm. She'd paid back 26000 at this point, and the loan shark said she still owed £16,000. So of her £1,088 hard-earned income, Mm. every month she was paying the loan shark £900 with four kids to deal with as well. And there wasn't like explicit threats of violence. It was subtler than that. It was driving Mm. past the house. It was the text messages. It was following her to school. It was it was intimidation rather than kind of I'm going to break your legs. But it took Mm. over her life. You know, she felt worthless. She felt like she got herself into this situation. Um, And you meet her now um, because the alone shark was arrested after after she made a report to a housing officer. Uh, you meet her now, she's a different woman entirely. She's got a confidence back, she's got a glow back. She looks about 10 years younger, to be honest, because wow. she's not got that hanging over her anymore. So I think that kind of shows the greed and the financial side, but also the sort of psychological impact these loan sharks can have. Oh, 100%. I, it's it's awful. And is there like, do they often do like written contracts or is it kind of word of mouth? Or what's the norm? 90% word of mouth, I would say. Um, mm, we've yeah. had a few where they've done contracts. They've tried to look legitimate. Um, or they've been maybe working for a legitimate lender and they've left, but they've carried on lending from their own back pocket and they've not told people they've left the employment, right, um, yeah. which can be really hard for people to spot. So, and they would still give contracts to make it still look legitimate. But the vast majority of loan sharks is, oh, yeah, I can lend you 300 quid to help you out. Pay me back at the end of the month. That's fine. It's mm. all very, very informal at the point at which you take the loan. Mm. Yeah, that's it's a lot, isn't it? I, I, you mentioned, obviously, Kelly um she's obviously like you said a mom of four kids and I feel like there's a misconception that this kind of thing only happens to a certain type of person um but there's actually so many people that can just fall victim to to loan sharks um one example obviously being someone with a poor credit history they might sort of turn to that quick 
quick loan that they can get without any credit history. Um, and it would just be interesting to hear from you of any other sort of people that could be impacted that we might not have thought of. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it can be anyone because even people who appear to have lots of money, you can be asset rich and cash poor, can't you? You know, where you've yeah. got the big house, and you've got the nice car, but you've got to finance that. And the mm -hmm. cost of everything's going up at the moment and people might be struggling, you know, and I think mm -hmm. we're all we're all, they say, don't they, two paydays away from from real problems. And that doesn't matter which end of the spectrum you're on almost because mm -hmm. people live live to their means. So, yeah, we've I mean, we've supported people who've earned in the 30,000s of pounds salaries. And we've supported people where they haven't even tried to get a loan from somewhere else and they might have been able to. But because this right. was Brian at the pub who was offering them quick cash as a mate, they were like, well, that, that's easy. You know, rather than applying for a credit card or applying for a, a loan or anything else, you know, it's me mate Brian at the pub and, and he's offering it me now and there's no paperwork and it's dead easy. I'll just borrow from there. And sometimes it isn't isn't even that kind of lender of last resort. It's the lender of choice because it's quick, it's easy, and people think they're borrowing from a friend. Yeah, and I, th I think it's quite sad, but often like a lot of elderly people might be targeted because they might be a little bit more naive and they wouldn't expect someone would want to do something like that. So it's it's horrible, isn't it? Some of the the people that get impacted. By yeah, absolutely. Sort of we've had like with, with elderly people as well, we've had them report on behalf of grandchildren where, you know, that it happens, doesn't it? Grandchildren are a bit scared to go and tell mum and dad when they think they've messed up, but yeah. they'll happily yeah. go and tell grandma. And, you know, we've, we've had them where that they've been sort of bailing out grandchildren, you know, mm. in fear of the loan shark who's lending their granddaughter money. And even one lady really tragically, she remortgaged a house to give her granddaughter oh some God. money to pay off the loan shark. Um, and and was, was saddled with a mortgage again, you know, sort of late 50s and, and had to start paying a mortgage again. And yeah, it, it can impact anybody. You know, I've, I've seen people who you would archetypally look at and think you're more like a loan shark and they've actually been the victim. Um, mm. It's not just just kind of single mum on benefits. It can it can impact on anybody. Definitely. And do you think there's any sort of financial education out there or any campaigns that can be used to help people that might be within those victim categories to sort of avoid these situations? That's a really good question. I think there's there's two big things for us. One is debt advice and people accessing debt advice, free debt advice, impartial mm. debt advice when they need it, because we see so many people going to loan sharks because they've had that red bill or they've had the bailiffs at the door because they've not paid, you know, whatever it is they haven't paid. And they've maybe not dealt with that debt and they've buried their head in the sand a little bit. And it's got to a point where there's imminent court action, there's imminent threat of property being removed, there's imminent threat of eviction. And at that point, they yeah. go to the loan shark. Whereas if they engage with the creditors, if they talk to them, had a conversation mm. with them, you know, most are reasonable people and they want to set up repayment plans. They just want people to pay. You know, if it takes a bit longer, it takes a bit longer. But if people don't engage, that's when they take action. So I think it's about that accessing debt advice and, and that that's fine. That's not shameful. That's absolutely brilliant. If you can do that, it can change your life almost. And then the other side is the kind of, you know, it's hard to do sometimes, but the resilience side, the saving just a little bit, even if it is £10 mm. a month, even if it's £2 a month, you know, it's just saving a little bit so that you have a level of resilience for when, you know, the ridge tile falls off the roof or the, the car tire bursts yeah. or the kids mess up their school shoes with four days left of term or whatever <laughs> else happens. You've just got a little bit that just tides you over. So we promote things like credit unions very heavily for the idea of, you know, savings and then affordable loans and loans that are smaller amounts because most loan shark loans are kind of 500, 600 pounds, mm. which the, the banks don't want to lend that to you or me, you know, because it's not worth their while. So yeah. it's about mm -hmm. getting people in with the right credit for them at the right time when it when it's needed and then debt advice as well. But I do think it, it, it's a, a massive problem because we know that if people see mum and dad paying Brian, I keep using the word Brian, poor old Brian's being a massively castigated Targeted today. today. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There's lots of Brian's complaining. People that get used to Steve at the door calling every Friday and mum and dad paying him and that's normal. Mm. So when they grow up, they'll borrow from yeah. Steve or Steve's son or whoever is the new Steve on the block. And it, yeah. you know, that behaviour gets normalised far too easily. So it's about trying to break that cycle as well within families and within communities. Yeah. Just seeing that that statistic of the 1.08 million just shows that that's true, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And loan sharks prey on any vulnerability they can find. You know, if an area's the big employer in the area goes bust, they'll be straight in. 
you know, mm. um, energy prices go up straight in and anything they can do to kind of prey on vulnerability, you know, run up to Christmas or, you know, that the kids are putting loads of pressure on you for the latest thing, aren't they? Always do that, don't they? Yeah. Wouldn't it be good if you had an extra couple of hundred quid just to get them the thing they want this year? And it's, it, you know, it's it's easy done, isn't it? It's it's really hard to say no to because yeah, at that point they're super friendly. Yeah, I imagine that's where the name came from as well, because sharks are predators and they're loan sharks yeah. are as well predator and I'm, I'm they trying, are. although so. one of my favorite stories from from my time with the team is we interviewed this guy under caution we'd arrested him for illegal lending and he said he did a community service he was he was liked in the community no one else would lend these people money he was doing a community service so he said so i'm not a loan shark i'm a lone dolphin <laughs> <laughs> that was his defense i was like okay we also had someone we had someone when we were on the bbc for a documentary really early on someone rang up and complained that we were giving sharks a bad name and they were oh, like sharks are lovely creatures and you people <laughs> you people like the brian's complaining today you know you oh, people man. are giving sharks a bad name so yeah it's an oh, interesting God. one though as well because it doesn't translate so when we've worked with other communities with migrant communities if you translate loan shark it means nothing it'd be like saying you know camel penguin to us or something yeah. you know with yeah. english as first language <laughs> and so eastern european they talk about lone leeches i quite like that yeah, the idea yeah, of a lonely yeah. sucking the blood sort of suckers yeah. on and drain, drains the life out of you, doesn't that's it? So yeah. yeah, the language is quite interesting at times. It is. Mm. I, I guess that's why you have illegal money lending to kind of have the the two um, terms. Yeah. Um, in terms of obviously the partnership with IE Hub, obviously you mentioned that managing money is obviously so good and a way to obviously hopefully prevent people falling onto to loan sharks. Is that why you, um, Stop Loan Sharks decided to partner with IE Hub to kind of benefit people before they even get to that point? Absolutely. You know, budgeting is such a key thing, isn't it? You know, especially if you paid monthly, the, you know, especially this time of year, you know, January, December, it can be a long way to the next payday. Mm-hmm. And that idea of having a budget and knowing what your outcomings are and what you have to pay and what you've got left over. I just think it's so important. And yeah. I think, you know, I really like what you guys do when people are working with creditors, because you don't want to have to have that conversation six times. You don't no. want to fill in no. eight, nine, ten income and expenditure forms because it's just a bit soul destroying. And it, it can be humiliating. People can feel humiliated. We don't like talking about money in this country, do we? No, so no. I think what you, no. you know, the, the services you guys offer are brilliant. And as well as that kind of prevent side there's an opportunity for us to look for intelligence as well because if someone's paying a friend 250 pound a month and they have been for 10 years and they have to pay that friend no matter what that's a big red flag for us so there's that opportunity as well i think of us actually you know looking at friend lending in particular and thinking is this really a friend or is this something a bit more sinister yeah that def- that's why we love partnering with like charities and people who actually help and benefit because it's like it's just it's a hub isn't it a hub and it, we just want to help as many people as we can so there's definitely different avenues to to do that um in terms of red flags are there any like red flags and signs of someone that might be involved with loan shock in terms of like if you've got a family and friend like it, what they're presenting if they could be involved with loan shock yeah, I think it's it's maybe someone who's gone a bit secretive. We know a lot mm-hmm. of loan shark victims won't tell anyone about this debt, not even the partner or the best mate. Mm-hmm. I think maybe it's someone who's, you know, uh, funny with the phone a bit, getting loads of messages and, you know, sort of cancelling calls and a bit jumpy um, mm-hmm. and things like that. You know, I think some somewhere where suddenly money is, is gone, where someone was just about surviving, just about keeping their head above water and all of a sudden there's no disposable income there at all mm-hmm. because it's going yeah. to the loan shark. I think it's it's about having the conversation and it's about not being afraid to ask the conversation as, as a as a family member, as a friend, but also as professionals, because, you know, we know sometimes mm. it's, a, it's a hard conversation to have. It's a bit like a gambling mm. conversation sometimes. Yeah. But actually, just by making people aware, it, it can make such a difference. The biggest reason people don't talk to us isn't fear, embarrassment or shame. It's that they didn't know we existed and they yeah. didn't know this was a crime. Yeah. So sometimes actually just starting that conversation, you could save someone from this. The average time it takes someone to report a loan shark is three years. Now you think in that wow. three years, if they're paying like three, four hundred pounds a month, how much money and pain and heartache that is causing. So if you mm. can help intervene earlier and get the get that person thinking, this isn't right, I need to do something mm. about this a bit sooner, you can save them in all sorts of different ways. Yeah. Do you think people are likely to turn to kind of family and friends to kind of, like you said, bail them out, like kind of essentially rob Peter to pay Paul, isn't it? So then you're building up debt with obviously a loan shock, which you don't want, but you also don't want to be in debt to family and friends as well. And it's stuck in that. It is absolutely. We've seen people where they've got credit cards to pay off the loan shark, you Mm. know, where where they've gone and got legitimate loans. And then the problem is they default on that immediately because the money's still going to the loan shark every month. So we get loan sharks as well where they don't actually lend you the money. They rent it to you. 
So you can borrow two grand, but you've got to pay me £200 a month rent on that money. So that £2,000 isn't coming down at all. You still owe me two grand, but you're renting it at £200 a month. And because you're paying £200 wow. a month, which will double if you miss a month, yeah. then you're paying £400 a month. You're never going to have the two grand to pay me back. So no. you could end up paying tens yeah. of thousands for that £2,000. And you still owe that £2,000. There's all sorts of different ways they kind of use to try and catch people and get them paying for forever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, is there any common tactics that are often used by illegal lenders to kind of trap them in and get them lending off them? I think one of the things we hear a lot is that they, they'll say they're going to charge double bubble. So mm. this idea that, you know, you pay borrow 500, you pay back a grand, you borrow a grand, you pay back two grand. But the problem is it will be in such a short period of time that that then either leaves you short again or you're not going to have that money to pay it back. Yeah. I think the idea of, you know, being friendly, being charismatic. Oh, do you know what? I remember having young kids. They're a nightmare with school shoes, aren't they? You know, I'll lend you £100, pay me back on payday and, you know, buy me a drink. And that becomes then some, something significantly mm. worse. So I think it's it's the charismatic friend lending. Um that, that there's the thing to watch out for and like I say you know if this is someone you don't know very well then why mm. are they doing that it's just it's just about being a little bit suspicious one of the big sort of red flags overall though for us is a loan without paperwork if you're borrowing from a legitimate yeah. lender they have to give you paperwork it's a legal requirement if not the law the loan's unenforceable so they can't go after you in court for it so they mm. make sure they give you paperwork so any loan without paperwork big red flag and with any legitimate loan you should know how much you've got to pay back yeah. so you know if I if I look at my credit card bill online today, I can see what I've got to pay back. If I ring my mortgage company today, they will tell me what my balance outstanding is. Mm. And sharks won't do that. They'll fudge it. They'll they'll blur the lines and make it hard for you to know because they don't want you to pay it off. They want you to carry on being in debt to them. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's scary sort of the impact that, that they have on the people, isn't it? And you briefly touched earlier on Kelly and sort of the consequences that loan sharks had on her. I feel like there's an emotional, a financial and a psychological toll that it has on people. I just thought I wondered if you could touch on on those things. Yeah, I think it, it does vary as well. It's, there's a spectrum of borrower. I think, you know, we've seen people in real fear, in absolute mm. fear for their life or for their kids' lives. You know, um, normally as well, loan sharks are bullies and, and they're all mouth and no trousers because, you know, they, they want you beholden to them. They don't ever kind of almost follow through on that threat because then what they got next? Mm. What happens after that, mm. you know? Um, but we've had, you know, we've had a, a lady working with in London. She's in the Ghanaian community and um, she borrowed some money for her mum's funeral off uh, someone in the community that she knew. And the threat there, if she doesn't carry on paying or if she goes to the authorities, is a curse to be placed on her family. It's witchcraft. And because of the wow. community, she 100 percent is terrified of that. That's her fear. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that's what loan sharks are good at. They'll, they'll, they'll work out what your fear is. So, you know, I'm a cat lover. I have two cats that I adore. That's the way to get to me. You know, yeah, it's not yeah. about shaming me to my parents. It's not about putting me on social media or anything else. You threaten the cats. I'm doing what you want. <laughs> and I think that's what they're very good at. So, again, in, in different communities, we get this idea of shame, you mm. know, of, of telling if you're maybe working in the UK, of telling your family back home that, yes, you're working in the UK, but you're bringing shame on the family name because you're not paying your way. Yeah. And I think that mm. that for some people is is massive. That's worse than the idea of, of you know, having their legs broken, um, the yeah. idea of shame. So it, it's about that's that's where the psychological manipulation comes in, because it's about working out what threat is your hook. What is the mm -hmm. thing that's going to get you paying that maybe wouldn't get me paying? Mm. And my yeah. threat will be different yeah. to your, excuse me, to your threat. Um, but it's, it's that kind of manipulation and, and being able to change from one thing to another that makes them so terrifying, I think. And it's all it's all linked together, isn't it? Because you've got that constant interest building up where you're in that cycle of debt. Like C so said earlier, you might need to borrow from another person to pay this loan shark off. And then as a result of that, you've got the psychological stress on you. And then that causes you to have your mental health issues with your anxiety, depression. Like it's all just sort of cumulative and it just becomes mm -hmm. insane, doesn't it? I think. It does. And it, it has a big impact on people's self-esteem as well, because we've had people say to us, I don't think I deserve to be helped. I've got myself into this. Yeah. And it's like, no, you borrowed £250 three years ago. You've paid back 9000 Yeah, You, you yeah. didn't get yourself into this. This is a criminal. This is a criminal behaviour. You are a victim of crime. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you were burgled, you'd be reporting that. And this is no different. But the psychological element makes people think they're somehow you know culpable when they're absolutely not it's the loan mm. shark who's done something wrong not not the borrower at all 
Yeah, hundred percent. And obviously, if people do find themselves in this situation of obviously listen to this podcast and think, you know, that could be me, what would you advise them to? Obviously, we want them to go to stop loan sharks, but could you just explain that process for us? Yeah, absolutely. First thing is all loan sharks are not called Brian. Um, but secondly, <laughs> I think, yeah, we're here, basically, we're here to help. So we have a hotline, which is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, people can talk to us anonymously. They can not give us their name and have a conversation with us. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, we've also got live chat on our website, which is Monday to Friday, nine to five, because we know sometimes people feel a bit more anonymous if they're typing rather than speaking. Yeah. Um, so there's those two ways of contacting us. We'll come out and have a conversation with you. You know, if you want to meet us face to face, we'll take you for a coffee at Morrison's Cafe and you can tell us what's going on. We'll tell you what we can do to help. If you then choose to walk away, that's fine. That's not a problem at all. We never put mm-hmm. pressure on people, but we're very good at kind of explaining the situation and saying, here's your options. And then yeah. what you choose to do, that that's entirely your call. But we do have the power to prosecute loan sharks. We've uh, we've prosecuted hundreds of them. And um, and that does end it for people. You know, that stops the debt. That stops people having to pay them back. That stops the sort of terror in the community. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I've been doing this job 15 years and I've had loads of people say, I wish I'd spoken to you a lot earlier. I've never had anyone say, I wish I'd never met you a lot. Yeah. I think, you know, it is it is difficult to do and we completely understand that it is difficult to do. But, you know, my team as well, we're not investigators. So we are safeguarding social work, counsellors, debt advisors. Um, you know, we've got backgrounds in helping people um, and yeah. that's what we want to do. So we, we help the criminal side as well in terms of, you know, um, talking to people about that side of it. But it's about the individual. It's about us helping you in whatever way mm-hmm. we can. Love that. Love that. Dr. Jones questions and um, we had some questions submitted from um, viewers so I just wanted to cup handful um, just to share if that's okay. Of course. Yeah. Um, the, the first one that we got is kind of related to getting help so someone said what should I do if I suspect one of my friends might be sort of trapped in a loan shark so do they intervene themselves or do they sort of advise their friend to do to do what they need to do they can still call us and even if they don't want to talk to us about that situation we can talk to them about what to say to their friend Mm. you know we will have that conversation with them and and see why they think their friend is 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 in debt to a loan shark and and what we can do about it so I think it's still worth them having a conversation but yeah it might be just about breaching that subject with their friend and saying I think you're in trouble Mm -hmm. and there is an organization who can help they provide specialist support do you want me to help you call them you know shall, shall we call them together do you want me to help you with that um it is totally tricky I, I do get that but you know we've ha- I've been on live chat and I've had people coming through saying I think my friend is is um is borrowed from a loan shark what do I do and I've sort of talked them through mm. you know things that they could say to to try and yeah. help their friends so yeah we, we talk to us by all means but I think it is about being brave enough to breach it definitely yeah and um someone's asked about that kind of the law behind loan sharks obviously we know it's literally illegal money lending but what can happen if someone is a loan shark so the maximum sentence you can get for illegal lending is two years in prison and or a fine of five thousand um, pounds. But we also prosecute for things like money laundering, which can have a higher um, sentence. Mm-hmm. So we prosecuted a guy last year in Staffordshire and he had two and a half million going through his bank account. Um, and um, because then money laundering becomes the primary offence. So he got he got four and a half years. Um, for mm. that um we also look at proceeds of crime offenses so we will take away people's shiny things if they have been bought with with criminal uh, money and mm. um and redistribute that money um through community projects and, and various other bits and pieces so mm-hmm. we have got we have got teeth pardon the pun with the sharks but um <laughs> We, we have got the ability to do that. And, and it is, you know, yeah. like I say, criminal activity. We also, as well as a team, prosecute for all the offences that we find, even though we're, we're not the police, we're trading standards. So we've prosecuted in the past for like assault and blackmail and even okay. rape in one very extreme case, although most loan sharks don't go that far. Because we want to show the court the kind of entirety of the criminality that's going on, but also the impact mm-hmm. that it's having on, on people and communities. Of course. Yeah. And then just one final question but keep you too long. <laughs> um, so someone said, just as an everyday person walking about, what ways can they raise awareness to to help stop loan sharks having this impact that they've got? That's a really good question. I think 
anything and everything. I think it is this thing, like I said before, that we don't talk about money. I think it's starting to have mm. those conversations. It's starting to talk about debt. It's starting to talk about different sorts of debt. But, you know, I mean, we've got um, we've got posters, we've got leaflets. If people want to take them and distribute them in local shops, that would be great. We've got social media as well. We're on um, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn and Twitter. Oh, it's not Twitter anymore, is it? X, sorry. X. Um, yeah. Showing the age there. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, you, you can share posts on there and things like that. We've got kind of awareness raising campaigns we do throughout the year. We do one at Christmas, one for back to school and one kind of May time. And I think it is just about spreading, spreading the word as, as much as possible mm. that, you know, this is like I say, this is a legal activity. People who've borrowed have done nothing wrong and that there is help and support available. Amazing. Thank you very much. Um, so, yeah, I think that has been an amazing episode. Is there anything else you want to share, Kath, that we haven't covered yet? Just our contact details, if that's OK. So I mentioned yeah. the hotline. That's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And that is 0300 triple five double two double two. And that's answered by one of the team. We don't use kind of call centres or anything else. It's answered by by one of the illegal lending team. Mm -hmm. um, and the website as well is stoploansharks.co.uk. Um, mm -hmm. And that's got live chat on it Monday to Friday, nine to five. We have also actually got a YouTube channel. So in going back to the question about what a friend can do on our YouTube channel, Stop Lone Sharks England, we've got victims telling their stories and mm -hmm. telling how they came out the other side. And it's one of the tools I use when I'm working with borrowers from loan sharks and say, look, you might think there's no way out, but look at Matthew's story. Mm -hmm. And yeah. listen to Matthew yeah. telling you how he came out of it. So again, if you've got someone you're concerned about, sometimes showing them those stories on YouTube can be really effective. Yeah, well, definitely. I'll obviously link everything, like you said, all your contact Thank details you. in the description below. Um, and then on YouTube, we have the video episode. So I'll put that on the screen as well. So, yeah. Thank you very much for joining. Appreciate your time. It's um, a pleasure. Yeah. Lovely to meet you. And we'll speak to you soon. OK, take care, everyone. Thank Thanks. you. You Bye. too. Bye. Bye. <laughs>